Hi, I'm Professor Clements. Today we're going to be talking about doing titrations of a weak acid with a strong base, and this is the third part in the video series. In the first part we looked at how to calculate the pH of a weak acid all by itself before the titration had started. In this second part we looked at how to calculate the pH of a titration before the equivalence point, and there we used the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation in order to simplify the calculation for us. And here we're going to be looking at how do we calculate the pH of a titration at the equivalence point. So you can see our problem up there on the board. We're saying we're doing a titration of 25 milliliters of 0.2 molar formic acid with 0.4 molar sodium hydroxide. And we're finding the pH of the solution after 12.5 milliliters of sodium hydroxide has been added. Now, I told you that it's at the equivalence point, so you kind of know it is, but it's always good to remember how to calculate our equivalence point. And for a monoprotic acid and a monoprotic monobasic base, it's volume times molarity of the acid is the volume of the base times the molarity of the base. And if you plug in our numbers there, so you would plug in for V acid, you'd say we have 25 milliliters for molarity 0.2. For the molarity of the base, we have 0.4 molar. What you'd find is that the equivalence point, when the acid and the base have been neutralized, we have as much H plus as OH minus, is 12.5 milliliters of base. And that's what we have in this problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to set that up and see what it looks like. So we're doing this titration. And titration, one of the things that happens is volume changes constantly. So a lot of what we do is we convert our starting concentrations into moles, because moles don't change as you add volume, even though molarity, concentration, will change as you dilute things, as you put one thing on top of each other. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert everything to moles. So for my acid, I take my 25 milliliters, right? Volume times molarity gives you moles times 0 0.200 molar. And I find that I have 5.00 millimoles of acid. Now, one could convert your milliliters to liters, and then you'd get 5 times 10 to the minus third moles. But a lot of us use millimoles just because it makes life a little easier. We don't have to com keep converting those milliliters. For my strong base, which is my sodium hydroxide in this case, I have 12.5 milliliters, and I have 0 0.4 molar. And so I find I've got 5.00 millimoles of strong base, which is exactly what I expected. I expected the acid and the base to be equal, because that's what we mean by equivalence point. So what do I have? Well, let's write out the reaction here. Our acid is HCHO2, formic acid, and it's going to be reacting with hydroxide ion. And what's it going to be forming? It's going to be forming the formate ion. And water. So it's going to be deprotonating the formic acid in order to form water and the formate ion. So let's look. What do we have before the reaction? Oh, my video went away. I'm not sure why my video went away. Let me check on that for you. No, it's not going to let me. Huh. I'm not sure why my video went away. Well, I'm going to keep going even though you can't see me because uh, I don't want to redo this video. So before our reaction, right, we have 5.00 millimoles of this, so we've got 5.0 millimoles of our OH minus. Now what happens when you have a weak acid and a strong base is the strong base completely comes in and tears down the weak acid, completely deprotonates it until we run out of our strong base. And so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to run this strong reaction. And we'll find that generally in aqueous solution that anytime we have strong reactions, we want to run them. Strong reactions include strong acids, strong bases, or things with very large K values which is what we find when we do the um, complex ions. So we're going to run the reaction, run the strong reaction. Then we're going to use up all of our OH minus. And by the way, 
At the start, we didn't have any of the formate ions, so I'm going to put a zero up there. I forgot to put that at the start. And we don't care about water because it doesn't appear in our K expression. So if we use up 5 millimoles of OH minus, we're going to use up 5 millimoles of our formic acid. And we're also going to create 5.0 millimoles of our formate ion. Well, what does that mean? When we actually are going to be doing our equilibrium part, we're going to be starting with not these concentrations we started with. That doesn't make much sense, but I think you know what I mean. Is We started with this strong base and this weak acid, but they reacted really strong. And then we have to do the equilibrium. It's like if you're going to you know, let out a bunch of pit bulls and let out a bunch of chihuahuas and see what uh, damage they do. You let out the pit bulls first. You let them do all the damage they're going to do. And then you let out the chihuahuas, and you see what they do, because uh, they're not going to have much effect if you're uh, still watching what the pit bulls do. So anyway. Not a great analogy, but uh, hopefully you understand what I mean. So we just add up those two, uh, whoops, put a minus there. We add up those that we find. We have none of the acid left. We have none of the hydroxide left. And we have 5.00 millimoles of our formate ion. So what do we have present? In solution, there's no ha weak acid. There's no hydroxide. There's just a concentration of the formate ion. That looks to me like a KB problem, like those salts we've talked about. If you take sodium formate and you dissolve it in water, it's going to make a basic solution because formate is the conjugate of a weak acid. So we're going to put that back into concentrations by making a line here for concentrations. And well, we got zero on here, zero on here. And this one's going to be 5.0 millimoles divided by my total volume. So it's going to be 25 milliliters that I started with and the 12.5 milliliters that I got from adding the sodium hydroxide. And so you end up with 0 0.133 molar of the formate ion. OK, seems like a lot of work so far, but we're not done yet. We've got 0.133 molar of the formate ion, but we still need to try to figure out the pH. That's the goal here. We're trying to find the pH. So if we have a weak base present, we're going to put together an ice table. So here I've got my formate ion. It's going to react with water in equilibrium to form the formic acid and hydroxide ion. So it's going to deprotonate water in this case. Not a lot, right? Our KB is going to be fairly small. But we're going to make our ice table here and figure out what we have. We have 0.133 molar of this. We don't care about water because it doesn't appear in our K expression. We don't have any of the formic acid. And we're going to assume that we have approximately 0 hydroxide. We have the 10 to the minus 7th molar from water, but we're going to assume that's going to be fairly small. We'll see what happens. We know it's going to go to the right because that's the only way it can go. And so we put some x's there. And we add up those lines for the equilibrium line. And we get something that looks like this. Since we have a KB expression, let's write out what it looks like. How did I know it was a KB? It was, well, if I was taking a conjugate and I was reacting it to make the acid and hydroxide. And that's kind of our definition of what KB looks like. And how do we find KBs? Well, if you look it up in a table, chances are your table is not going to have that KB in it because most tables don't have KBs. What you're going to look up is you're going to find that the Ka for formic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the minus fourth. So how do we find Kb? Well, if you remember, Ka times Kb is just Kw. So Kb is going to be Kw over Ka, or 1 times 10 to the minus 14th divided by 1.8 times 10 to the minus fourth. So if I take that calculation, put it in my calculator, I can put the answer up here. It is 5.56 times 10 to the minus 11th. So there's our KB. Now we can use our ice table to substitute in values into our KB expression. And I'm going to try to do that right here. So we've got KB, both our formic acid and our hydroxide were just x, and our formate ion was just 0.133 minus x. And again, that's 5.56 times 10 to the minus 11th. Well, we can solve this using the quadratic equation, or 
we look at there, we say, hey, we've got a concentration of 0.1. We've got a k of 10 to the minus 11th. That's a good um, candidate for the small x assumption. So we're going to assume that x is much, much less than 0 0.133, which means 5.56 times 10 to the minus 11th is equal to x squared over 0 0.133. You can solve that. You multiply both sides by 0.133. You take the square root, and you get that x is 2.72 times 10 to the minus 6 molar. And if you look back up at your ice table, oops, I wrote the wrong thing. That is the concentration of your OH minus. That's your hydroxide ion concentration in our ice table. Let me scroll back up real quick so you can see that. There we go. We have our hydroxide ion concentration right there as x in our ice table. Okay, well, we're closer. We're looking for the pH. Let's find the pOH. It's going to be the negative log of 2.72 times 10 to the minus 6. And that's going to be 5.566. The pH is just going to be 14 minus that, 5.566. And you end up with 8.43. I ended up with two digits after the decimal on my pH because if you look back, the Ka that we looked up only had two significant figures, and so we only get two significant figures out of there. So that is how we find, well, and also, this is a, a reasonable number, right? It's not very basic, it's slightly basic, which is what we'd expect when we put a small amount of a weak base into solution. So this is how we find the pH at the equivalence point. Uh, we React all the acid, all the base, find out how much base we have, and then use an ice table to find out the pH. Hope this video was helpful. Thanks.